this short tutorial we will show how to set up a Gartner flight controller in airplane mode. For this tutorial we will be using the MZ32 radio, but please note that this tutorial can be applied the same way with our other radios as well. This tutorial is applicable for the following Gartner flight controllers. The Gartner airplane flight controller has basically four modes of operation. Off mode, the flight controller operates as a regular receiver. Mode 1, the flight controller makes flight corrections to stabilize the current flight path. Mode 2, heading lock or hold mode where the current flight path is kept. Mode 3, rate mode which will retain the current attitude and control deflections even when the control sticks are in a neutral position. For example, when flying a knife edge it will retain the airplane control surface deflection until a new stick input is provided or the mode is cancelled. Each mode can be changed and enabled during flight with an assigned control on the radio. We can also influence the sensitivity or gains for each mode during flight with a fixed offset or proportional control. This will require an additional channel on the radio. There are different ways to accomplish mode changes during flight. There is no right or wrong way for doing this for as long as the flight controller responds to what it is you want it to do. In this tutorial we will set a different flight phase for each mode. We will use flat curves to make up the different settings needed for each mode. The first step is to create a model which in our example is an airplane with two ailerons. From the phase set menu we will create the flight phases as follows. Gyro on assigned to switch to as follows. Gyro rate assigned to switch 1 as follows. Gyro hold assigned to switch 1 as follows. Gyro off assigned to switch 2 as follows. The switch layout is convenient as both switches are close to another within reach but you can assign any switch based on your personal preferences. Switch 2 controls the on and off state of the flight controller while switch 1 controls the modes for heading hold and rate mode. Make sure you give each flight mode a distinct name. You can optionally assign a voice to each flight phase as shown. You will be able to download the model and voice files created in this tutorial from our website at gopnerusa.com from the flight controllers download page tab. Test the switches for proper flight mode changes. Gyro on, gyro off, gyro hold, gyro rate. Next we are going to set our control offsets to control the different flight modes which we do from the base menu in the control set menu. One of the nice features our flight controllers have is that they provide additional virtual channels which can be used to control flight modes without giving up any receiver channels. For example, if you had a sick channel receiver, you can assign a control to a higher number channel such as channel 10 or 11 depending on your radio model. In this tutorial, we will be using the Falcon 12 which is a 6 channel receiver. Channel 8 will be used for changing the flight modes and channel 9 for gain control. From the base menu we tap on the control set menu. First, we will name our control channel 8 to gyro mode and make it flight phase dependent. For this channel we do not need to assign a control as it will be controlled by the flight phases. Next, we name channel 9 gyro gain and assign one of the levers to control the channel. In this example we use LV2. We will leave this channel as global. Next, we tap on the detail of the gyro mode channel. The screen shows us a linear curve between minus 100 and plus 100%. Changing flight modes from the radio is done by changing the curve value so that the flight controller will know which mode it needs to enable. The values are gyro off minus 100%, gyro on minus 50%, gyro hold 0%, and gyro rate plus 50%. Switch to the gyro off phase and verify that it's active. Tap on the basic tab and change the curve to a horizontal curve and move the curve to the bottom until it shows minus 100. Now change the flight phase for each of the modes and set up the curves as follows. You can cross check if all the values are correctly set from the server monitor by reviewing channel 8 which is the gyro mode channel and channel 9 which is the gyro gain channel. This completes the basic setting on the radio. Next we need to map the control channels in our flight controller which we do from the telemetry menu. 
To access the telemetry menu, your Radeon flight controller must be bound. The model needs to have all the servos connected to the correct channel. Also make sure that the servos move in the right direction and that the maximum servo throws are properly set. Press the telemetry hotkey or go to the telemetry menu and select the settings and data view. The first screen shows the current firmware version of the flight controller. Make sure the type of model shows plain and that the period field is properly set for the type of servos you are using. Use 10 milliseconds for digital servos and 20 milliseconds for analog servos. In case you are planning to use additional telemetry modules, you will need to designate channel 5 for telemetry input. With the down arrow key, scroll to the bottom of the screen and set channel 5 to sensor. Tapping on the right arrow key shows the free mixer menu. The purpose of the menu is to create mixes for special airframe configurations. The manual shows various examples you can use for your specific needs. Tapping on the right arrow key shows the gyro settings menu. On this menu, we will map the channel controls made on the radio to the gyro settings. The first two fields are the mode fields, where you can set the gyro to the mode you want to use. For example, if you would like to fly only in mode 1, which is stabilization, we will change that field from 0 to mode 1. We can do this by tapping on the enter key to select that field and arrow keys to change the values from the keypad. However, since we want to control all the available modes from the radio and be able to switch the gyro also off, we need to map the channel control keys we created earlier to make this happen. Tap on the keypad enter key and use the down arrow key until you see channel 8 on the display and tap on the enter key to select that channel. You will notice that next to the channel there is a number which represents the current mode, which in this case is 0 meaning flight controller off. Toggling switch 1 and 2 will change the modes. You can repeat the same for the rudder channel. The next section specifies the amount of deflection for your control surfaces. Consult the manual for recommendations which are dependent on flying style and model type. The default values are great for sport flying and should be your starting point before making any changes after flying a model. Please note that we can also assign controls on the radio to make changes to the deflections depending on the flight mode currently in use. For example, for torque intense 3D flight we can increase the deflection values of our flight controls when in rate mode or increase rudder deflection when in hold mode during landing. The possibilities are many so you should experiment to find what is working for you. The last field is the coefficient or gyro gain field which determines the sensitivity level and amount of the correction when an air disturbance is detected. It affects the aileron, elevator and rudder equally and it should be used to fine-tune the gyro settings during flight. To find the sweet spot you will need to fly your airplane in different flight conditions. When the gyro gain is set too high a noticeable shaking or oscillation of the model will be detected which should be countered with gain reduction until a smooth flight is achieved. We map channel 9 which we set previously to the coefficient field the same way as we did with the modes. When moving the assigned control you will notice a rapid change of the values on the coefficient field. The value can be changed between 0% and 200%. Start with 100% during flight until you will find the setting that works best for your airplane. The next part of the flight controller setup is to teach it how it is oriented in relation to the airplane. Take notice of the installation recommendations in the manual. Tap on the right arrow key to access the gyro assignment menu. Verify that it is set as the two aileron servo and move the cursor to the do setup field and change the field from no to yes using the arrow keys. At this point do not touch your flight controls and perform the following steps. Move the aileron stick to the right which will highlight the aileron field which is now at default zero. Hold your model and roll it to the right until the highlighted field changes to the recorded value which in our case is minus two. Do the same for the elevator and rudder channel. For the rudder channel make sure that you yaw the front of the airplane to the right and not the tail which will result in an opposite reading. When all channel axes are recorded successfully the setup field will change from yes to no. Make sure to check that all the deflections are moving to the right direction. For example, in stabilization mode 1, when rolling the airplane to the right, 
The left ailbone control surface should show a correction to the left with an upwards deflection. When testing the deflections, you can temporarily set all the gains and deflection values to their maximum, which will result in more prominent deflections, making testing visually easier. The last step we need to perform is to record the servo limits we have set on the radio so that the flight controller will operate within the mechanical boundaries the airplane has been configured. Tap on the right arrow key to access the servo limit menu. This final step, if not done, may result in the flight controller deflecting the control surfaces beyond their physical limits and in some rare occasions even damage the servos. We need to record the limits for any of the channels that the flight controller is controlling which by default are as follows. In case we use mixes to control additional channels with the flight controller, we need to record those limits as well. To copy the several limits from the radio, for example the aileron channel, move the cursor to the number 2 field which represents channel 2 and tap on the keypad anti key. The field will be highlighted, ready for input. Move your aileron control to its maximum position and press the keypad enter key to store the new value. This step needs to be repeated for both left and right positions of your ailerons. Repeat the same process for the other control surfaces as well. This concludes the how to set up our flight controllers. Before we let you go, a couple of points. Make sure your battery system can provide the power the flight controller needs. Flight controllers are very active, providing constant input to attitude changes, therefore consuming more power. Don't activate the flight controller before you have perfectly trimmed your airplane. An airplane that is not well set up will not fly any better, even with a flight controller. Fine-tune each axis first to find the optimal setting for your airframe. For example, if you are trying to determine the optimal deflection settings for your ailerons, reduce the deflections on your elevator and rudder channels to zero to avoid any confusing control corrections from the flight controller. Finally, always fly the airplane. A flight controller is not an autopilot and will not compensate for any control mistakes the pilot makes when flying his airplane. When properly set, the flight controller can do a lot of hard work for you and make flying easier and safer. We hope you enjoyed and found this tutorial useful in setting up Kaupner Airplane Flight Controller.